Well, hello, everybody who's out there. Uh, welcome. So today I've got my um, about week and a half old chicks. Um, so you can see from one camera, which uh, <laughs> we've got a chick cam, and then you have me um, to do questions. Um, Sam, how did you want them to do it in the Q&A section? If they have questions, they can just type something in, I suppose. Yeah, so if anybody has questions as we go through this program, uh, feel free to post something in the Q&A. Uh, you should see a, a small button at the bottom of your screen that kind of looks like a, um, a box with a question in it. And we will go ahead and I can relay some of those questions to Lily and we will, I can type up an answer if it's a quick, easy thing. Um, but go ahead and either, in, either a question in the Q&A or you can type something up in the chat if you'd like to uh, ask Miss Lily a question about her chicks. Okay. <laughs> All right. And at some point, I do actually have a video of these guys, one of these guys hatching, um, but we might wait a minute. Maybe we'll ma wait until like 10 after or quarter after just to give people a chance to actually get in. Um, but of course, they were all super wound up and as soon as we start they all decide to take a nap but um i'm gonna pick some of these guys up and show you what they look like a little closer up so this guy or girl we don't know we don't know what they are yet they hatched uh last sunday so they're about a week and a half old so they are you can see they're starting to get some wing feathers and tail feathers but they're still pretty fluffy on their backs and their tummies and everything. And we will not know until they actually are have all of their feathers, which is about six weeks of age, uh, whether they are hens or roosters. Um, so roosters, once they're fully feathered, these feathers along their back, if they're, if they're girls, will be round. Um, if they're boys, they will be pointy. And so that's how I'll know if I've got roosters or hens. But like I said, um, they need about four to five more weeks before we know that so um, but this one is a rhode island red um which i actually have some pictures i can share as well so the one on top here is a rhode island red rooster so that's what this this little one is going to look like when it's a fully grown chicken um so they're dark brown and they lay brown eggs Let's see. And then just kind of to compare, <laughs> I know this guy is a Australorp. And as you can see, instead of being brown, um, it's mostly kind of a cream colored with some gray. I know. <laughs> this does not want me picking them up right now. Um, and those, when they get to be adults, look like this. So they're actually black when they're adults, but when they're chicks, they are kind of gray or black um, with lots of white on their face and their bellies. Yeah. And then these are so then these are my very fancy ones. These are called Phoenix birds and they're what's called a bantam, which is a smaller than normal. They're actually from Japan. Um, and this is what they look like as that's the rooster and then that's the hen. And so they have very fancy long tail feathers, um, and they don't get as big as the regular chicken. So you compare, remember these guys were all, these guys all hatched the same day and you can see the size difference. So this is gonna be a, a normal size chicken and this one's gonna be like a mini chicken when they're fully grown. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, it's pointing out, this one's pink underneath but that's because when they first hatched out of the eggs i was trying to keep track of which breeds were rich and i put little um pipe cleaner loops around their legs so that i could tell which ones were which and this one had a purple pipe cleaner which got wet and so which is fine uh they actually will do that at hatcheries they'll mark them with like a marker um <laughs> So yes, but this one is an Easter egger, uh, which will, if it's a hen, it will actually lay blue or green eggs for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's got a pink 
uh, spot on its belly. Um, for some reason, the the purple purple one is around. That's all. Did we do all? Yeah. So I have I have four kinds: the Australorps, the Rhode Island Reds, the Phoenix, and the Easter Eggers are the four kinds that I've hatched out right now. To say, did he, I see something in the chat? Sam, did anybody have any questions? Yeah, Come we've got. Uh, let's amazing. see a few that have come in so far. We've got. Would you recommend getting chicks from places like Tractor Supply Store, or where would you recommend getting healthy chicks from? Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, I've gotten chicks from places like Southern States and Tractor Supply Store before. Like when I was first, um, I've had. I grew up on a farm, but I've had um, chickens as an adult uh, for about five or six years now. So when I first started, um, there's a couple options. You can um, go to a, like a local feed store like Tractor Supply or Southern States. Um, you can also um, do mail order chicks, which is basically as soon as they hatch out of that egg, they ship it to you overnight. Um, there are some drawbacks to either of those. Um, the having them shipped, you have to be available to go get them at the post office the day that they come in because as soon as you get them, they need it to be put under a heat lamp. Um, which I don't know if you guys can tell from the setup, but I do actually have I'll show you behind me, but we have a heat lamp. Um, and they need to be kept when they're a day or two old, they need to be kept at around 90 degrees. And then I slowly move the light away from them as they get feathers. So right now they're used to being around 75, 80 degrees. But um, most most of the time, um, what you really just want to look for is that they seem healthy, that they're active. Um, they do get this thing is kind of gross, but they do this get this thing that they call pasty butt, which is literally if you if you get a chicken, you want to look underneath and make sure their bottom is clean. So you don't want to, if you're going to Tractor Supply or one of those places, you want to make sure that they look clean and healthy. You want to make sure that um, their beaks are clean because they can get respiratory illnesses. But as long as they seem healthy, um, they're safe to get. Um, you can also check a lot of times on Craigslist or Facebook. There are local farmers that will sell them. I actually usually rehome some of mine just because I tend to hatch out more than what I need. Um, but yeah, so you have multiple options, but just be prepared that whatever your options are, if they are really young chicks, like less than a week old, as soon as you get, I would actually set up a place and a heat lamp before you even bring them home, um, because as soon as you get them home, they need food and water and heat. Um, and that's the best way to kind of keep them healthy and prevent any kind of issues you might have. Um, I feel like I saw a couple others. <laughs> Yes, we did have another one that came through. It was, um, how many roosters do you keep? Oh, so I only have one right now because um, I only have five hens. And it, everybody varies in what they say. It really depends on the personality of your rooster as to how many roosters you can have. They do get territorial. The rule is usually you want to have five or ten hens for every rooster because then the roosters will start fighting. Um, it's just like any other kind of herd animal or flock animal. They kind of want to claim <laughs> their territory, if you will. Um, my rooster, because he is the Phoenix Bantam, they tend to be a more mellow breed. So if I were to have 10 hens, I might be able to keep another rooster. But um, you only really need one rooster to hatch out chicks. And actually, if you're not going to hatch chicks, if you're just going to have eggs, you don't need any roosters at all. Um, so I have gone through time periods where I just had hens and no roosters as well. So as far as I'm concerned, I, one is about all I need. <laughs> the only time I would maybe bring in another one is if I wanted to breed out a certain type, like the heritage breed or something like that, which is what I'm doing with the band, with the um, the Phoenix because they're a rare breed. So that's why I'm keeping him right now. Um, I see somebody says, do you give chicks apple cider vinegar water? Um, Sometimes, so if I, it, when I get them from the feed store, um, if I haven't hatched them myself, like I said, since when I hatch them at home, they don't go through the stress of being transported. So they tend to be healthier because you're just taking them straight from the incubator to the brooder, which is where you keep them warm. Um, so I don't, I tend to just give them straight water, in the ones I hatch at home. Um, some people like to give them apple cider vinegar. You can also buy chick electrolytes at 
most feed stores as well. So I've also given that. Um, it's not it's not going to hurt them. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like folklore about all the, you know, the health benefits and things like that. Um, and I mean, I haven't my chickens will drink the water one way or the other. I have never really noticed, you know, it making much of a difference, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt. Um, just like electrolytes, it, it's not going to do anything to harm them. And um, especially if you're worried, you know, if they seem dehydrated or something like that, you know, it's always something you can try. Okay, I got one more here is what's your favorite kind of chicken? Oh, <laughs> okay. So I have to say these guys. So the Australorps. Um, and all of, like I said, all of my chicken, Rhode Island reds are pretty common. That's the ones that, you know, oops, <laughs> sorry, my, my motion sensor went off. Um, I really like Australorps, one, because they're very pretty, because when they become adults, they are completely black, but they have very iridescent feathers. They also lay very pretty eggs, which they lay these cream colored eggs that have little speckles all over them. Um, and they're also very mellow. They tend to be, um, really kind of laid back chickens. They, um, and they're not super loud or anything like that. Like, whereas my Phoenix hen, who's the little tiny white hen, she's the loudest hen of all of mine. And she will yell at me frequently <laughs> when she, when I'm someplace and she doesn't want me to be there. Um, but those, and I actually don't have any um, Orpington chicks with me, but buff Orpingtons I would recommend are great, especially if you have kids, they're a really good starter breed because they are very mellow they don't mind kids picking them up and carrying them around so those are those are my two favorites and then easter eggers are a combination and actually sorry easter eggers are kind of a mixed breed of a bunch of different things including orpingtons and australorps and australorps are the reason they're called australorps is they are a mixture of orpingtons and another breed as well so they're all kind of interrelated if that makes any sense do you have any other questions? I thought I saw a couple other ones. Yeah, I've got a two. Well, I'm going to combine two questions because they're kind of the same here. Um, but basically is how do you keep chickens healthy during the winter? Do they stay in their roosts all winter when it's you know, when we've got feet of snow outside or what are they what are they doing during the winter time? Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I have um, in my chicken coop, it's actually like raised up above the ground um, just because it was actually a um, children's play set, if that makes any sense. So like the wooden fort part, we actually closed in and added nesting boxes. Um, but I do add um, like hay or straw bales underneath of it in the winter to try to insulate it a little bit better. Um, I will also add um, more straw into their nesting boxes to keep their nesting boxes warmer. Um, it depends on breeds. Most of the breeds you'll find around here, like the heritage breeds, actually do pretty well in the winter. Um, there are some kind of more tropical breeds. Um, and if you're not sure, I mean, it's definitely you can pick up books and things. Uh, but uh, most of the ones I have are all pretty cold hardy. There are some tropical breeds of like very fancy chickens that have very big combs. Um, and their combs and their feet are what they regulate their heat with. And so if you have a chicken who has is a tropical breed they tend to have larger combs and they tend to have um like more bare like bare arms if that makes sense up you know whereas some of the breeds i have are you know their legs have more feathers and things like that on them so um they do pretty well unless it gets super super cold out um sometimes if we have a really cold winter i will put the heat lamp like what i'm using for my chicks out at night um if it's going to get but I'm talking about below, like way below freezing, like if we get into the negative numbers. Um, but most chickens, especially the breeds that you can find around here are okay, you know, at or below freezing and stuff. Um, they don't like to be cold. They don't like to be wet. So if it's snowing out um, or raining out, you know, I'll go and open the coop door and they just look at me and go, you know, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not leaving. Um, but yeah, otherwise they, they do pretty well. Um, as long as you just kind of keep an eye if it's going to be super cold out. Okay, we've got another question here. We have a hen that is a year old and has yet to lay any eggs. Is this okay? Well, my first question would be, what do they know what breed 
the pen it is um, because I know like for example my Easter eggers take forever to start laying um, so especially if it's a heritage breed um, the other thing is that you do want to make sure that you're feeding them layer feed as opposed to like there's different types of if you're using a feed just from the feed store um, so like these guys are getting what they call starter feed which is for chicks it's really kind of finely ground um, then when they get to be old enough to lay eggs, which for most chickens is around six months, but like I said, my Easter eggers sometimes go to nine months. Um, you also want to keep in mind that some breeds of chickens don't lay as much or at all in the winter. So if it's, if your chicken reached the age, like say she was nine months right when the winter hit, she might be delaying and might start laying soon um, now that the weather is getting nicer. Um, but then also, like I said, you also want to make sure that you are actually feeding them layer layer feed um, because just the protein and everything is, is a little bit different. Um, I also make sure that my chickens have access to oyster shell because um, that's something that provides calcium. You can also feed them, crush up and feed them the eggshells as well um, to get help them with calcium. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Did they know what kind of breed of chicken it is, Sam? <laughs> yes, they they did follow up with that. It's called a lavender Orpington. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so those are those are really pretty birds, by the way, and they're very popular. Um, but they are a heritage breed, and I, yeah, they are um, a little bit longer to start um, laying. So they might be okay. But and I would say probably most of the time that breed starts laying closer to the nine month mark and three months ago it was january so um you might start looking for eggs soon <laughs> i would say if they're about a year old i would start looking soon because i've had that happen where the ones that are take nine months it's like oh they might start laying and then winter hits and they're like no i'm not i'm not gonna, <laughs> i'm not gonna start laying it and they will also start laying these little practice eggs that are about the size of a ping pong ball um the other thing you might want to do is um, if you're not sure if they're laying at all, I don't know what your coop setup is, but like I let mine out into my yard during the day. And sometimes if I suspect that they're going off and laying eggs like somewhere else, not in the coop, sometimes new hen, like young hens don't know to lay in the coop. You can put like a ping pong ball or you can even buy these like ceramic fake eggs and put them in the nesting boxes to encourage them to lay there because it may be that she started laying, but she's going behind a bush or into your garden bed, you know, like your flower bed or something and, and laying eggs there. And you may, you know, go to mow the lawn in the next couple of weeks and find a couple of eggs in your yard because that's definitely happened to me. All right, we've got another one. What is the best food and drink for chickens? Mm. Well, so I... It's hard for you to say because everybody's got a different opinion. I would say if you were planning on eating their eggs, you probably want it to be as healthy as anything you would, you know, put into your body otherwise. So that being said, I do not um, go out of my way to buy like the organic chicken feed because most of the year I have about an acre of land. My chickens go out and they browse, meaning they're eating weeds, they're eating bugs. Um, I also take all of my, scar like, they also get all my scraps, so like all the potato peels, the carrot peels, the, um, the eggshells, um, they get a lot of that, so they don't eat a lot of chicken feed except for in the winter. So most of the year, um, like I just don't think cost versus, you know, what I'm getting is, um, I don't think it's enough to go completely organic on my feed just because I know most of their diet is, you know, healthy organic stuff that they're getting out of my yard and my garden and my kitchen and everything like that. Some people do, you know, really care about that though. And they do have, you know, you have the ability to buy, um, you know, fully organic, non-GMO, and all that kind of stuff. And I would just say it's really, I think, up to everybody individually um, as to what they're they're looking for. Um, if they're planning on eating the eggs, um, you know, it just is kind of your own comfort level. But 
like you said, um, chickens are omnivores. They will eat bugs and they'll eat all sorts of fruits and vegetables. Um, they'll browse throughout your grass and your yard and your garden and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm a big proponent of letting them, you know, kind of eat as much of that stuff as they want and then just supplementing with chicken feed. Um, and I will also in the winter time when they kind of need a little bit extra, I will um, feed them like sunflower seeds and, and um, wild bird food and stuff like that mixed in just to give them a little variety and things like that. Um, trying to think if there's anything you're not supposed to feed chickens. My chickens won't eat onions or citrus, even if I throw it out to them. So I kind of assume that maybe that's something they either don't want or don't need. Um, yeah, don't feed them chick. That's true. Don't feed chickens chicken. You can feed chickens eggs because the egg is the food that the chick uses when they're turning into a chick. Um, and so it's the, you know, an egg itself is just basically the food. Um, so it's okay to feed them like, you know, if you have scrambled eggs left over, some people get a little weirded out by that, but I mean, it's literally like it's 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 healthy for them and they actually get a lot of nutrients so you can feed them eggs you can feed them eggshells um but yeah don't ever feed so that's where mad cow disease came from i don't know how much we want to get into that but don't ever feed an animal what it's made of so like if you had i wouldn't you know they will eat like meat and stuff if you have leftover meat they'll eat it so yeah don't ever like if you cook chicken in your house, don't ever feed it back to your chickens. That's about the only thing, yeah, that I would really say don't ever do because that can lead to some weird stuff. <laughs> weird diseases that we don't want to get into, I guess. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty much open season on whatever you, you know. It's just like anything else, you know, you don't want to you don't want to feed your chickens potato chips and cake and stuff all the time because that wouldn't be healthy, but. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, kind of going on the medical side of things, um, what kind of medical care do chickens need? Mm, honestly, I've been pretty lucky that um, mine are pre have been pretty healthy. There are some things, and I would definitely recommend if you are planning on raising chickens to get like a guidebook. Um, we have like really good 4-H guidebooks here at the library. Um, there's also, we have books called, st wait, hold on, wait. Sorry. Uh, there's one called Stories, uh, S-T-O-R-E-Y. Um, this guy's story does, Stories Guide to Everything, goats, cows, chickens. Um, so I would recommend that for, because all of those kind of have a medical thing. So there are issues like chickens can have problems with their feet where they get like swollen tendons and things like that. Laying hens can get what's called egg bound. I've never had that happen, but it's basically like they get packed up with eggs and there's ways to treat that. Um, they also, but basically if you have all the basics, if they're getting a good diet, um, they like to have access to some kind of dry dirt or dust because they do what's called dust bathing that keeps any kind of parasites like dust mites or anything like that off of them. Um, and like I said, an access to some kind of grit like oyster shells or dirt or something like that, because that's um, just like any kind of bird. They do need some kind of grit or, or something um, to help them process their food. So I, like I said, I've been pretty lucky that I haven't really had any major health issues with my chickens. And I think it's just more with chickens, it's more preventative than anything else. Um, you know, so that if they have the right diet, they have water. Um, you know, and all that kind of stuff that you should be okay. I mean, there are issues that can come up, but um, like I said, they're they're pretty rare. Um, oh, the other thing I would recommend as far as disease control is that if you have chickens, anytime you bring a new chicken or chicks into your current flock, you want to um, quarantine them for about a week just to make sure that the new chickens don't have some kind of disease that are gonna make them the other ones sick. And so I'll usually put them in kind of a separate little pen um, just so they don't bring anything in. Um, so like I said, with, with it's, it is mostly preventative stuff. Um, but if you are going to keep chickens, I would definitely recommend having some kind of guidebook, uh, that you have access to. There's lots of chat rooms and things online. Um, I think there's like one called backyard chicks and things like that. Um, so if you ever have anything weird, you can kind of either look in a book or get online and go, is this normal? And people will usually jump on and say, oh yeah, you know, you just need to do this, you know, to help them, so. Okay, 
10, chickens and dogs coexist? Mm. <laughs> That's a good question. It depends on the dog. I will say that. I have four dogs. Um, and I have two dachshunds. Those are my kids' dogs that are 15 and 12. When they were younger and sprier, I would not let them be around the chickens because they would try to go after them because dachshunds are a type of hound and they have a, like a prey drive. However, now that they're both senior dogs, they they don't seem to care. And so I'll let them come in with me when I go out to feed the chickens and things like that. But yeah, I would say, and, and certain breeds of dogs, like if you have a really mellow dog who doesn't seem to, you know, chase stuff, um, you'll probably be okay. But if you have a dog that likes to chase squirrels or cats or anything like that, um, you might be able to train them to not go after them. But I mean, I, right now, these guys are in a room in my house, and I have to keep the door closed at all times because my dogs think that I'm hiding squeaky toys from them <laughs> because they can hear them chirping. Um, I don't think my dogs would intentionally hurt them, but I think they would be curious um, and and maybe you know do something to be too rough with them and hurt them. But um, once they're full size, chickens can run at about seven miles an hour. They do have beaks and claws, so they can protect themselves. Um, but yeah, I would say it depends on the individual dog more than just saying like, yes, all dogs uh, can be okay. Cause um, I've had some dogs that are, yeah, totally fine around chickens and don't try to do anything. And then I've had other dogs that are just the whole time they're outside and the chickens are outside. They're just focused on trying to get to those chickens. So um, I would just say maybe take your dog out on a leash and see, see how they react. And um, otherwise um, good fencing is a good idea probably just to keep everybody safe, you know, and then they can watch the chickens from the other side of the fence because that's what mine do. Okay, so what do you do with your chickens when you go out of town? Mm. <laughs> I, out of town? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so a cup, you have a couple options. Um, if they are full size, um, you can buy, I mean, you can kind of see. So I have this little, gra this is a gravity feeder. It's like a basically a mason jar full of water and it sits down. You can buy full size version of those for water. You can also buy, so basically it gravity feeds the water as they drink it. You can also buy versions of that for food. Um, so I do know some people that will fill, you know, fill that with food and water and that'll keep them good for three to five days. Um, so usually when I go on vacation, what I will do is I will ask a friend or a neighbor or a family member to let them in and out of the coop in the morning and then close the coop again at night. And that's mostly just for predators because, you know, foxes and raccoons and things they want to try to get, you know, and even stuff will want to eat eggs and things like that. So um, you can also buy automatic coop door openers. Um, like I said, I, I live in an area that I have enough neighbors that also have animals that they don't mind um, walking over and closing my coop door. Um, and especially if the food and water part is taken care of, but you can also buy an automatic and it's like set by either a timer or like a sun sensor. Chickens are not nocturnal remotely. Like as soon as the sun goes down, they are in the coop and they're done for the day. Um, so if you have something that's on a, a light timer, um, you can actually get them or it will automatically close the door from the coop. So I do know some people that have chickens that that's what they'll do is they'll just make sure the food and water is you know full, that they've got enough supplies for three to five days. Um, and then if they've got an automatic thing that opens and closes the coop door. But even with that, I would probably still ask a neighbor to check in on them just to make sure because, um, you know, stuff happens. Like I, I went out the other day and the coop door had gotten blown closed because it was super windy outside. And um, so all of my chickens were in my goat hut and my goats were not happy because uh, they were being usurped by chickens. Um, so, but yeah, it is possible to travel. I mean, I go on vacation and stuff and I have way too many animals, but, um, and also, yeah, just, or find a local 4-H kid who wants to come and help take care of your stuff or find find a friend who wants to house sit and, um, you know, play farmer for a week, you know. It's a lot more fun when you don't have to do it all the time. So some people actually enjoy, you know, going out and taking care of other people's animals just for the weekend. So. 
Okay, we've got another question here. Can chickens fly? Mm, yes, but not well. Um, <laughs> so they do. So these guys actually just starting, I was, of course, because they haven't even tried, but as soon as I, I brought them today to do this, they um, started attempting to fly out of the tote that I keep them in. Um, so yes, they can fly depending on how big they are. So basically the bigger the chicken, the less they can get off the ground. So they can kind of more glide or like an assisted hop, if that makes sense. So um, for example, my fence is probably about five feet tall. Um, my rooster regularly gets on top of it because, um, you know, he wants to show off and crow and be like, hey, you know. Um, but they, weirdly enough, they'll go into my neighbor behind me, who's also a librarian for Loudoun County, because she has chickens, but they won't go to my neighbor next to me because they have dogs. Um, so they can fly a little bit, enough to, like, get over stuff, but they're not, like, regular, like, they're not like geese. They're not going to fly south for the winter. Um, they're not going to get up and fly around like a parakeet or anything because they just, they're, wingspan to their body it doesn't quite work but they can kind of assist themselves to get over higher things than you would think um some people can do do what's called clipping their wings which doesn't hurt them it's um literally um like taking scissors and cutting the longer feathers here um like i said that doesn't hurt them but what it does they'll only clip one side and so they can't get any lift. They're kind of like whirly gigs. They'll just kind of like spin. <laughs> um, I've never had to do that because like I said, mine are pretty good about respecting um, boundaries and things like that. Um, the other thing is that chickens will not go over stuff that they're not sure if they have like the ability to land on it. So at my previous house, I had a fence that they could easily jump over, but I actually did um, a row of like, um, flags about six inches above that and because they couldn't really tell like where the fence was versus this like you know string you know these kind of flappy things they never went it was like you know those pennant flags they never tried to jump it because they couldn't chickens won't go over something if they can't like tell that they're going to be safe because they are i mean they're not the smartest animals in the world but they are you know smart enough to kind of um yeah, try not to, to try not to hurt themselves or die. You know, they have survival instincts. You know, they they usually will run away from dogs and avoid avoid predators, and and they won't jump into something they can't see. If that makes any sense. So usually, if you have a problem with chickens trying to escape your fence, I say like get some flags or or you know something that's got movement to it, and they they'll they won't try to go over it anymore because they're not they can't quite figure out. Um, where the safe landing spot is on that. Awesome, thank you. And let's see, our next one is, um, do chickens need things like deworming and other parasite prevention? Not really, unless you're keeping them in a really small, like enclosed, like some people only keep them in a small run. Um, so with that, so parasites come from eating off the ground where there are like eggs of, of things, you know, bugs and things like worms and things like that. Um, so I have never had an issue with that because like I said, I do have enough space and they free range and they go out. Um, if you were to keep them always in the same spot, never kind of like rotating them around, you may want to do that. I will say, however, that um, pumpkins and pumpkin seeds are a natural it's i wouldn't say it's a dewormer but it creates there's enzymes in it that create a environment that in their digestive system that worms don't like so a lot of farmers um, will feed their um, chickens and i actually even feed my goats because goats do need to be dewormed um, i feed them pumpkins and especially right after halloween i go around and ask all my neighbors if they're not you know if they're whole pumpkins that they haven't carved I'll go around and gather all of those from my neighbors and feed them to my chickens and uh, my goats and everything. And that kind of acts as a natural dewormer. But um, no, I mean, I've never had that issue, but it's like I said, if you are to, keeping them in a small enclosed area, then um, yeah, I would recommend either feeding them a diet um, or, or that has some kind of deworming property, or I would, um, there is medication. You can also buy what's called medicated feed um, 
for that same purpose. I don't buy medicated feed. It's, there's not a price difference. I just, like I said, because I'm eating the eggs and things like that, um, I try to kind of keep it as low, you know, kind of like add less is, less is more kind of thing. But you can buy medicated feed as well if that's something you're concerned about. All right, so we have a question here is, in nature, how many of the eggs that a hen laid would she hatch? So does every egg hatch into a chick or does she do kind of a mix or so? So, I mean, it really depends. Um, I've had some hens that are really good moms and I've had some hens that are not so, not so great. Um, it, so in, so with putting them in an incubator, um, I have, it is, you know, they have to be fertilized, which you need a rooster for. So not every single egg is fertilized, but most of them are if you have a good, like I said, proportion of hens to roosters and everything. Um, you don't want to wash them and you don't want to refrigerate them. So in nature, of course, they wouldn't be washed or refrigerated. Um, and in nature, the hens do what they call, they call, we call it being broody. So if you have a broody hen, that is a hen who is um, sitting on eggs. And usually what sh the hen will do, because um, weirdly enough, so a fertilized egg can kind of be in this almost like stasis for about a week where it's been laid, but it hasn't been warm consistently. Um, after that, it starts to degrade. So in nature, what a chicken will do is she will lay, because they lay about one egg every 24 hours. So she'll lay about seven or eight eggs, and then she'll start to sit on them. And it's at that point when they are consistently about 99 degrees, because chickens actually have a more, higher body temperature than we do, that's when the embryo can start to develop and then she will pretty much stay on those eggs all day, every day. Um, usually if a hen is broody, you will have to kind of like make her get go off and get some food and water. Some people will actually bring food and water and put it right next to the broody hen. Um, and then she'll sit on them for three weeks because that's how long it takes for them um, to do that. And then I mean, hens actually have a better hatch rate than humans. So my incubator, if I hatch 70 to 80% of my, my eggs, that's considered a good hatch rate. Um, if you have a good hen, so one that, not one that decides a week into it that she's done and abandons them, but like if she consistently sits on them, they are more like a 90% hatch rate. So they actually do a better job than we do. Um, the reason I use an incubator is just because I currently don't have a really good broody hen. <laughs> um, I have one that fakes it. She'll sit on them for like five days and then get bored and go off somewhere else. So um, since I don't have a really good mom right now, I, I put them in the incubator. But I will sometimes if I if I ever I've had them in the past where they um, are good broody hens and they'll they'll sit on them and then they're great moms like they'll guard them and they'll keep them under them and keep them warm and um, but yeah, so it just depends on your chicken. Some breeds tend to be broody more often than others. Some breeds don't. Um, some breeds are just awful moms. <laughs> so, I hate to say it, but yeah, some chickens are just not meant to be moms. But yeah, in nature, if they are a good, a good mom, um, most of the eggs will hatch. Yeah, they're pretty good at it. <laughs> okay, we've got one here is, do chickens like fruit, like apples, and do they need things like salt licks, like some horses have? Mm, so they don't need salt in particularly, but yes, oh my goodness, do they love fruit. They will go after anything red. So I used to have raspberry bushes where my chickens are. Um, I don't have raspberries anymore. Um, well, I mean, they're there, but they just get stripped. Between my goats and my chickens, they're just, they never make it. Um, so I have an area outside that I do that. But yes, they love fruit. Um, they do, I, mean, I wouldn't say they have to have salt, but they do get like all my left, like all my, I mean, this is why I love having chickens um, because they get like all my stale stuff out of my pantry. Like when I clean out and like the stale Cheerios and the old crackers and the chips and stuff, they love all that stuff too. So they just, you know, when I clean out my fridge, when I clean out my pantry, anything like that, uh, the chickens get it. Um, like I said, as long as it's not moldy, I wouldn't feed them moldy food, but if you've got slightly wilty lettuce or the ends of things that you've cut off, or uh, like I said, stale stuff, they love bread. I mean, they're kind of like any, any birds. They love bread and, and crackers and seeds and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
uh, yeah, they're not, like I said, they're not super picky, but yeah, they really do. Um, and they, and they'll actually know who feeds them because like when I come out, they run to me. So like you'll see them running in the yard because they know that I have the, I have the extra treats. Like they have access to food all day long, but I bring out the chickens, the, the kitchen scraps usually after I'm done cooking dinner, I'll take, I have a bowl that I throw all my kitchen scraps in. And so in the evening, I'll usually go and dump the bowl out and where the chickens are and they'll, they'll come running as soon as they see me because they know that it's like extra treats that they get on top of their regular food. And then I get eggs in return. It's a magical process. You get all, take all your stuff and turn it into eggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the lady who had a chicken that she was asking about earlier, she says that um, the chicken, her other chickens bully the ones that isn't laying an egg or isn't mm. laying eggs. Um, do, why do they do that? Well, so chickens do have a pecking order. Um, and some, and like I said, some breeds, like I said, I um, actually, I think we were talking about this before, during, before we actually started the thing, but some breeds are more aggressive than others. Um, like I, um, like meat breeds are bred to be really aggressive because they're supposed to gain weight really quickly. Um, and so they are food aggressive. And so like, I would never keep a meat bird, a meat breed, um, which are things like leghorns and um, New Hampshire's and things like that. Most of them are, are bred just specifically for that. I would not put those in with my regular egg layers just because they tend to be bigger. They tend to be really aggressive. Um, so it may just be that because, and that breed, um, the lavender Orpingtons um, tend to be pretty mellow. So it may just be that the other breeds you have are more food aggressive. And I will say that sometimes when chickens are stressed, they don't like eggs. Um, I didn't mention that before, but I've had it where I've gotten full size hens, you know, from friends of mine. Sometimes we'll swap like, oh, you have this breed that I haven't, I don't have or whatever. Um, and usually just, just taking them from somebody's house and putting them in a new environment is enough to get them to stop laying eggs for two to three days at least. Um, sometimes it takes them a week. Um, so stress is a factor, um, and yeah, it depends on how many chickens you have. I'm not, I'm trying to think of what you can kind of do. You can try to kind of create a safe space for her, um, like maybe divide something off for her to hang out in, um, or even divide your flock. Like if you have one that you know is like kind of the the bully um you can try kind of keeping sometimes people will remove the bully or take the bully and maybe one other one that they don't pick on as much and kind of put those two maybe in a different area for about a week and just kind of see um but yeah so i mean hen chickens are flock animals they they kind of all just like sheep or anything like that they kind of all do what the whole group is doing and they do have a pecking order so you do tend to have um, some people call them flock queens or herd queens, where there's one hen that she always gets the best of everything and she's first in line for everything. Um, and that's okay. You do usually don't mess with the pecking order. Um, but if it's to the point that, yeah, she's maybe not getting any food or is um, getting beat up or something like that, um, sometimes you um, some some people will deal with that by actually kind of taking the more mellow birds and, and putting them in one area and the more aggressive ones and putting it in another area um sometimes adding i mean i don't know what her um capacity is you know some people are have little coops and are only want to have two or three chickens but sometimes adding in a couple chickens that are also kind of mellow um will it, you know it'll just balance it out enough um but yeah it is kind of a trial and error when you have chickens that pick on each other um and like i said just like roosters like my rooster is really mellow that's why I keep him around. I don't, I, you know, I don't tolerate aggressive roosters. So, um, but yeah, sometimes you end up with, yeah, unfortunately with pecking orders and bullying and stuff. So you can try kind of splitting them up or you can try maybe adding some in, or I mean, worst case scenario, if you know it's one hen that's doing it, you could try rehoming that hen, um, you know, to somebody else who maybe has breed similar or something like that. Um, and see And see if that, you know, because if you remove that hen, it's going to kind of restructure that pecking order. And so maybe the one that's getting picked on is not going to get picked on quite as much or, or might just totally, you know, and it'll take about a week or two for them to kind of reorganize where everybody is in that order as well. So, things are pingy. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, well, this might be a good time for you to show that video of oh, them yeah, hatching yeah, because... Oh, my goodness. I know. I thought we were going to wait 15 minutes, and then we got into questions. These are good questions, by the way, everybody. So, okay. So can I, okay, I'm going to share my screen. So this, guys, this is only about two minutes long. It's actually at double speed, um, but I was able to capture these guys. So does that look good? Is everybody able to see this? Yeah, that, that's popped up good. Okay. And the question was, how long does it take for a chicken to hatch out of its egg? Okay, so this chick here um, actually took about 45 minutes. So, how, well, okay, that's actually a more complicated answer than what I just said. So, they do what's called pipping. So, the entire process of hatching is called pipping to zipping. Um, so, about 12 hours before this chick came out of the egg, um they had pipped which means that on the surface of the egg you could see one little part that had just kind of you know been pecked off from the inside and basically the reason they do that is to give themselves oxygen so the pipping breaks the shell to give them oxygen they then can spend the next 12 to 24 hours slowly doing what they call zipping which is they're going around the 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 outside of the egg the hemisphere of the egg and they're slowly turning inside that egg and pecking and pecking and pecking to create a line. And then, so this is the part that we're showing here is when is the zipping part. So once they've kind of gone all the way around the egg, then they can start using their feet and their wings to push that egg apart and come out. So the part where they were mostly pipped took about 45 minutes, but the entire process from when they pipped to when this chicken actually got out of the egg was probably more like 12 to 18 hours. So you have to be very patient. Uh, I usually, it's almost like, you know, people who are in labor. I did a lot of like laundry and uh, <laughs> like keeps going. To, I did a lot of laundry and chores around the house that day because I would go check on them and then go, nope. And you got to just kind of leave them alone. Um, you want them to mostly do it by themselves sometimes you can do some stuff to help if they're mostly out of the egg and they just need a little help but like if if they just have a tiny crack you gotta just let them do it on their own because you don't want to like force the process basically but yeah so and that one's a green egg so that was the first little one to hatch that's almost the end of the video <laughs> and as you can see they're very scraggly and scrawny and wet and um, and they takes it takes about 12 to 24 hours um, for them to kind of fully dry out. And this is one of the Easter eggers. So um, so this is what that chick looks like now. <laughs> so um, which, like I said, it was came out that came out of the blue green egg. So this one's an Easter egger. Um, and so if this is a girl, she'll lay blue or green eggs when she gets to be, you know, she, they take longer. So she'll probably be closer to like eight or nine months old before she starts laying. Um, but yeah, so that's, so we went from that little scraggly chicken and of course we've got, we've got pine. I put pine shavings in the bottom of their thing because that kind of keeps them clean and dry. Um, you can do shredded newspaper and other things like that. Um, oh, I see somebody just asked what these. So Easter eggers are a mixed breed of chickens that lay blue or green eggs. Um, they are actually descended from the Aracana, or some people call them Americanas, um, but Aracanas and Americanas are actually purebred ones are very rare. Um, you can find them in this country, but they are pretty rare. Um, the other fun fact right now he's got yellow she or she has yellow legs when chickens become hens when they're fully adults um, you can actually tell what color eggs they lay by their legs so easter eggers when they get to be adults will actually have greenish blue like they're very dark it's kind of like an almost like an army green but they have green legs whereas um, and then my hens that lay brown eggs have more have brown legs, and then my white egg layers have bright yellow legs. So if you're if you have hens and you're not sure what color eggs they're going to lay, you can tend to look at their legs and take an educated guess. Um, 
not always, but yeah, usually if they have bright yellow legs, they're white egg layers. And then um, if their legs are like an army green, they're gonna lay you blue or green eggs. Um, and then if you, so egg, egg color, Egg color is actually like eye, like eye color or hair color. It's um, genetic to the bird, and it's actually a protective part of the protective coating that they put over the eggshell called a bloom. It doesn't wash, wash off, but you can actually get pink, purple, um, really dark brown eggs all by breeding chickens of certain types. So if you breed an Easter egg to a, a rooster that's from a brown egg layer, you will get what's called olive eggers because it's basically genetically they'll put a green protective coat over it and a brown and then you'll get like an army green um, or an olive green egg and so if you breed yeah so basically if you breed an easter egger and any kind of brown egg layer like a rhode island red or anything like that you be potential chicks could be olive eggers and lay olive green or army green eggs <laughs> Okay, we did have somebody ask, what does dewormed mean? Mm. Well, I mean, so any, so just like how, like dogs and cats can get worms, you know, like intestinal worms and things like that, um, any livestock can get it. Um, like I said, it's not, depending on where you're keeping your chickens, I don't find that worming, worms or parasites, meaning like they have it, Basically, you have parasite, the, you know, the animal has a parasite in their digestive system. So like, I wouldn't say like tapeworms, but we think of tapeworms. They don't get tapeworms as a different kind of worm. Um, yeah, hookworms, things like that. So um, it can become a problem, you know, if you're, if you're, it, you know, most livestock has a little bit of some kind of parasite in them. Um, and it's fine because there's kind of a balance in their bodies. It's kind of gross, but like, you know, you would never know or notice um, as long as they're healthy. But if if your animals do have some kind of worms, just like if your pet dog or your cat had worms, you would notice because they would be like, you know, having diarrhea or getting, eating a lot or, or acting sick. Um, and so, livestock can have that as well. Um, like I said, it's, I've never really had to do any kind of preventive thing because the way you get that, the way the birds get that is by being kind of in an area where they're never moving. And so if there is a parasite in their poop, basically, and then they're eating off the ground, they're basically ingesting, it's kind of gross, but they're like ingesting the eggs of these parasites and then it's kind of the cycle. Um, so the best way, I think, to prevent that is to allow them to have plenty of space to move around so they're not eating where they're going to the bathroom, basically. They want to, you want to have plenty of room for them. But um, I also know some people have small backyards and they still want to keep chickens um, and they maybe don't have as much space. And so in that case, a lot of people recommend that you use a dewormer, which is a medication just like you would give to a pet who had that issue and it basically just kills any parasites that are in them to prevent them from getting sick. So, and also, I mean, somebody had asked about apple cider vinegar in water. Some people um, find that that helps with preventing stuff because I think it creates like a, you know, the acid to pH level or something and things, which, and like I said, I feed mine pumpkin seeds and raw pumpkin because that also has an enzyme in it that um, prevents parasites from being able to survive in their digestive system. So. Like I said, most of the time it's not an issue. It, it becomes an issue when they're kind of in the same spot over and over again over a long period of time. Okay, so kind of on the same vein of that is we've got one, somebody who asked, my chickens eat their spit. Is that bad? <laughs> their spit? gonna say I don't know that I've ever seen chickens spitting <laughs> I don't know I was gonna say uh, I you know honestly I've had chickens for a long time but I don't know are, are they talking about like if they're like getting I don't know I would need more details on that I don't know if I want more details <laughs> but um they mean like if they're um like drinking water and it's getting back into the water they're probably okay um but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that chickens normally don't really produce a lot of like spit or, or any, any saliva or, 
or mucus or anything like that unless they're sick. So, um, yeah. I don't know. Any more details on that? Well, if they want to provide more details, they can go ahead and post again. Um, I was going to say, yeah, they, you guys could also feel free to, um, I don't know. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, I mean, like I said, I don't claim to be like the be all end all chicken expert. I've had chickens for a long time, so I've run into a lot of different things, but I also don't, I'm not a veterinarian. Um, so I don't know everything there is to know about every, you know, chicken and breed and everything out there. So um, I would definitely say if there's something that you have a question about that I'm not able to answer, um, feel free to, you know, come to the rest library and ask me, or we can get you some books that might have have uh, some answers for you there as well. Right. And we do have a request is, will you consider doing a goat cam and question and answer in the future? <laughs> <laughs> a goat cam, who asked that? No, it's, it must be somebody who knows I have goats. Um, yeah, so we are actually planning on um, doing something because I do actually, so my dairy goat, Abigail, um, is very much pregnant right now, um, and she is due in ooh, about two weeks, two or three weeks. Her, her due date is uh, April 20th, um, but she could go a week early or a week late, depending on either side, just kind of like how people, we don't really know when babies are going to show up. Um, so yeah, I will, we were actually thinking of doing um, a Q&A um, with baby goats. <laughs> we'll see how that goes because they're probably going to be a lot. I mean, these, all these guys, look, everybody, single one of them has fallen asleep. We've bored them to death, but um, yeah, they're, they're knocked out. So, but yes, I would be more than happy um, to, to do, we'll, we probably will do like a little goat info video before the actual goat Q&A, just like we did with the chickens. And then once Abigail has her babies, we don't know how many that will be. Um, yeah, we'll definitely do, we'll do another WebEx Q&A like we did here as well with, with the baby goats. We'll just have to see how much they're willing to behave because man, those guys, they're bouncy when they, from the day they are born. <laughs> Very cute though, but they're full of energy. Okay, now we are getting towards the end of the program here, but we do have two quick more, two more questions. Um, one follow up to the to the chicken spit question. Um, they, uh, the participant said that the chicken spit on the ground and the other chickens rush over to eat it. Oh, interesting. Honestly, I mean, I hate to not be able to give you an answer, but I'm going to say I've honestly never noticed my chickens spitting on the ground. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I will have to, um, I was going to say, um, yeah, do some research. If they want to, I don't know, Sam, how would you recommend, because you're the WebEx master here, how would you recommend that we do is there a way they can like privately send you an email or something? Cause I would totally, I can do some research and get back to them about that. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Like I said, I mean, chickens will eat eggs and chickens will eat a lot of strange stuff. So, and uh, just off the top of my head, I wouldn't be super concerned. Um, my only concern would be like, is if, is the reason the chicken is, spitting something like a respiratory issue that they're having. Um, so I would like, but I don't want to like, you know, make claims of something that I don't know anything about. That would be my, just off the top of my head, that would be my answer. But um, I, yeah, I would like to do more research on that. And um, if there's a way that we can get back to that person, or even if they just want to, um, reach out, like I said, I work at the Rust Library, so you're welcome to you know, stop by or call. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and share our emails with them. And yeah, if they want to get back to us. Yeah, if they want to shoot me an email, I'm more than happy to, um, yeah, do some research because I have books and things that I can look because like I said, I'm very lucky I have the books. I've read things about like bumblefoot and being egg bound. And there's this thing called fly strike. Luckily, I've never had any of those things with my chickens because um, I think preventative stuff helps, but that doesn't mean that there's not, I probably have a book and we may even have books in the library that cover that kind of stuff if it is a respiratory thing. Um, 
and be more than happy to share that with them. Okay. Say we have one other question? Yeah, it's just a little bit more of a technical one about equipment. Um, do you have an experience using chicken nipple waterers? So I'm thinking like a... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically, yeah, and so a chicken nipple water is kind of, um, it's like a baby bottle almost. Um, basically, it's a way of giving them water um, with less waste. I will say, I actually, because I don't have a huge amount of chickens, like I said, right now I have five hens and one rooster. I also have ducks, um, and my ducks have a pond. Um, so between that I mean, and the water that we put out for our goats and things, the chick, my chickens have access to fresh water all the time. I also have the gravity feeder for when we're away for a few days. Um, those types are good for people who have a lot of chickens and they're, you know, trying to not like, you know, like they're extend, trying to extend the time in between giving them water. Um, but yeah, as far as I've never actually bought one of those and it's most like I said it's mostly just because um well two things one is that I don't feel like I have enough chickens to um you know kind of qualify the cost because they do tend to be more expensive um the other thing is that like I said because I have the pond um during the winter we have a pond de-icer and that's where all the, all the animals kind of go to drink water as well so um yeah and i would i don't know how those work with you'd probably most people that i know keep them in like a barn or something where it doesn't freeze because i i think that would be an issue is it during the winter you would probably have some freezing with that so but yeah <laughs> i don't know but if you have any more specific questions about that uh i can definitely ask around i definitely have other people in my life who have more chickens than me who maybe have more expensive experience with that style of water or Okay, well, I think that is all the questions that I saw today. If you have any other questions, I, go, I went ahead and put our emails in the chat there. And we are recording this, and we will upload it to our library YouTube page, um, just in case anybody wants to share this with any other friends or if they want to uh, rewatch any parts of this. All right, well, thank you all. I'm going to all these sleepy chickens. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and yeah we'll uh, keep keep you posted on the goat on the goat cam <laughs> that should be sometime right i would say may because if she's due mid-april we probably won't need to wait until may um to do that so all right